car chases, Aston Martins, Alfa Romeos, Land Rovers, Lake Garda, Italy, and Carrara Marble. All part of the pre-title sequence in James Bond's Quantum of Solace. Hi, this is Dan Silvestri. And Tom Pizzotto. Of SpyMovieNavigator.com and our show, Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Vicki Hodges was on holiday when we recorded this, but we have her comments. Let's jump behind the wheel and race into Quantum of Solace. On your mark, set, go! All right, after the Columbia logo fades out, the very first shot we see pulls us right into the story. Nope, no gun barrel sequence. This is like we're still watching after Casino Royale ends. And this is the next scene. That's kind of like what it feels like. But we don't know that when we first watch his pre-title, Dan. That's true. This scene, this scene is a very well <laughs> shot car chase with a nice Alfa Romeo and an Aston DBS. Mm -hmm. You think it's just a cool car chase. It isn't until the end of the sequence that we realize this is a continuation from Casino Royale. Uh, that's true. And I, and I like that because the car chase is very well done. It holds up on its own. You don't have to think about it being a continuation. Yeah. And then when we actually see that it was a continuation at the end of the pre-title, it's a bit jarring, but kind of cool. It is jarring because I don't think we've ever seen this before in a Bond series, right? We, we haven't gone on a continuing journey from one movie to the next movie where it continues the same storyline, right? That's, cor that's correct. Yeah, so this is different. And a lot of things with the Craig movies have been different with Bond. All right, as Tom mentioned, simply put, really, this entire pre-title sequence from Quantum of Solace is a magnificent car chase. Bond has had some great car chases in his day, from Goldfinger through Casino Royale, but this car chase is just spectacular. And, and well, well filmed. Yeah, and really what dominates this entire pre-title sequence, I think more so than any other, is the point of view camera angles that we get and the non-stop, literally non-stop heart pounding action we get throughout it all. Some people don't like that, but I like it. And we'll focus on these elements right now. This has been the first pre-title sequence car chase since the Living Daylights back in 1987. Makes you wonder whether the use of Land Rovers in this chase is a tenuous homage to that film. It might've been Vicky, I don't know. It yeah, could it be. Could've been. Yeah. yeah. All right, we did a two-part podcast with the director of photography for Quantum of Solace, Roberto Schaefer. He has lots of reveals in that podcast, and it's a fun one to listen to. And here is what he said about the pre-title and how Mark Forster, the director, wanted it to go. And Mark would say that we're on Bond. He says, I never want this to stop. He mm -hmm. says, from the first shot, that first opening shot of the chase, yeah. he says, he's, I know he told Second Unit also, and, and the visual effects guy, he said, I want this to be 15 minutes where the audience doesn't take a breath. <laughs> they're just watching it and they're just caught and they just forget to breathe. That worked. Yeah. And it worked. <laughs> All right, really, you got your wish, Mark Forster. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to catch your breath here. I mean, it's fantastic. It's frantic. It's exciting. And thanks, Roberto Schaefer, for that. But immediately, what I love is that we are drawn into the scene and we see it's this beautiful location. There's water, the mountain on the shore, because it's like we're in this boat on the sea. And we see the shoreline and the mountain from the vantage point in an approaching boat. So I thought that was a kind of a cool shot. We're getting closer and closer to the shore. Then quickly we're brought to a car on the road and then back to the water and back and forth a few more times. We don't know if our point of view, the water, is where we'll be watching from or will we be taken into the road running through this mountain with arches open to the sea? I don't know. It seems we're approaching this road running along the seacoast, but we still don't know why or what is going on. <laughs> and those shots of the cars, you don't hear them. You just see them close together. Mm. Then yeah. you see an ammunition belt. You know those string of bullets <laughs> that you see with some machine guns? Uh -huh. Quiet. But speaking of ammunition belts, as an aside, now that you mentioned ammunition belts, <laughs> there's, there's an urban legend about the phrase, the whole nine yards, meaning you've given it all, that this phrase came from World War II because the standard U.S. aircraft machine gun ammo belt was 27 feet long, or, which of course, is nine yards. So when the gunner went through this whole belt, he shot off the whole nine yards at the enemy. I like that urban legend. 
But there are other theories, too, as to the etymology of that phrase. But, hey, I, like I kind of like one. that. Yeah. I, I, I like this one. I did, too. All right. <laughs> Uh, now, note this was shot in Lake Garda, Italy, in northern Italy. It's the largest lake in Italy, and it is a beautiful area. Oh, all man. three of us, Vicky, Tom, and I, have all been there to Lake Garda. It's gorgeous. And they grow delicious lemons there, by the way, which are incorporated into a lot of their local dishes and into their limoncello, which oh, is... Gotta like limoncello. Yeah. And Dan, we got some excellent olive oil from a grower there on our way to Balsano. Right. Remember the guy on the side of the road? Yeah. He had a little his house there and his little shack there, and we yeah. stopped and he we got we bought some olive oil. Oh, that stuff was good. I do remember that. It was a little peppery. It was delicious. It was fantastic. And I wish I would have saved the. It came in a little can. I remember that. Yeah, we got a can of it. And uh, I wish I would have saved the can because I would have ordered more. It was it was fantastic. Anyway, it really was. all right, back to the chase. <laughs> All right, oh, part that's of right. I was getting lost in Lake Garda. <laughs> I want the olive oil. All right, part of the chasing was filmed near the town of Navine, on the northeast coast of the lake, near Limone sul Garda, on the opposite side of the lake. So the whole top part of the lake is where they were filming a lot of the chase scenes. This is one filming location I have visited, both from the lakeside with its stunning vistas and from inside the tunnel with very loud acoustics. It is an amazing place. And another fun fact is that it links with the forthcoming film No Time to Die. Matera, Italy, which is featured in No Time to Die, was one of the locations considered for this pre-title sequence. It is fantastic there, Vicky. We didn't get into the tunnel, but man, the whole area is just fabulous. Absolutely. And I can see why they'd want that, want that location for a Bond film. And based on what we've seen just in the trailers for No Time to Die... Why well, Matera would be something they'd want. So it's it's yeah, nice yeah. that they have those type of choices to make. Yeah, absolutely. Italy, I think, is the number three country that have shot Bond films in. I think the UK, the US, and Italy are the top three. <laughs> yeah. So keep going back to Italy. We like it. All right, quick shots of a car, front, then back, then a tire, with Aston Martin visible on the left. You can see Aston Martin there. And a close-up of eyes that look like Bond's, Craig's eyes. So at this point, we're thinking Bond is in this action sequence. Of course, we don't know anything what's going on yet. And we see a hand go down to a switch or a button, a quick shot, hardly discernible. Then the Bond eyes again. The angle keeps switching from the sea view to the inside the car shot. And it's just interesting as this approach kind of brings us all just into the action, which again is frantic. (laughs) <laughs> all right and when we get a close-up of the road from the sea we see it's a road cut through a mountain with arches opening to the sea as we said before we're coming closer and closer to the arches and then bam we switch to a road a loud engine roaring sound fast driving traffic to maneuver around we get the driver's perspective we get shots of an approaching car from the rear through the side view mirror this is a simple shot and a simple concept but I love it because we are out of the boat and into the driver's seat of this speeding car. It is us driving the car, looking at the reflections of an approaching car in the side view mirror. This is one of my favorite shots in the entire pre-title sequence because quite brilliantly, we are in the driver's seat. What will we do now? That's yeah, what I'm and- thinking. And you're 26 seconds into the scene before that bam, you hear the loud car engine yeah. with that constant, constant motion before you hear the car's engines. You realize this isn't a boat scene. This is very gripping. And it is just so cool how they come in and you're in the boat and then boom, like you said, you're not in the boat and you're hearing the noise. Yeah, I love it. I love the side of your mirror thing too. Perfect. Yep. And then yeah, well, you know, that, that helps you get into the car. Yeah, right? yeah, so, you're in it. You're in yeah. it. And then in a heartbeat, and literally your heart is beating quickly here because everything's happening. We see a person in the passenger seat of a pursuing car leaning out of the window, firing an automatic rifle at us. (laughs) Well, it looks like it. (laughs) We're we're into this pre-title sequence. It's gun barrel. It's it's them shooting at us. (laughs) Yeah, we're into the, we are into this pre-title sequence like we've never been before. So this is a frantic series of camera shots that I may be, I don't know, one to two seconds long from inside the car, outside, dozens of shots being fired, trucks in the way, crashing, Bond is being pursued in a fabulously orchestrated chasing. 
the driver's side door has been ripped off of Bond's car. What a off, nasty thing to do to an Aston Martin. Yeah, offering no <laughs> protection. I think that big truck thing pulled it off of there yep. when they were crashing. And and so there's no protection from that side of the car as the chaos of this chase continues. So and that was that was one of the things that actually st- stuck out for me with yeah. this chase scene. That open door. The machine gun firing, mm-hmm. Bond having no protection from his left, the driver's side door, yeah. because it's been ripped off the car. So he's sitting there with his left side naked to whatever's yeah. potentially going to be at, shooting at him. Yeah. Yeah. Tom and I actually saw this vehicle at the Bond in Motion exhibit in London yes. when that was still open. Now there's yes. a Bond in Motion exhibit in LA. They're starting up now. I think it's opening in October for mm-hmm. a while. And they've ha- they have this car there. So go there. It's cool. It's it's amazing when you look at that. Think about a car chase with you sitting in the driver's seat <laughs> with people shooting at you and that door just not there to help protect you. Yeah, you know, and Q has done such a good job on that car. Yep. <laughs> and now the door is gone. All right, this is a chase like we've never seen before. There's no break. There's no chance to catch a breath. There's nothing. Mark Forster would be thrilled. There's nothing but our pounding action here. For the dynamic camera shots, a camera crane was used attached to a Mercedes ML55. It was able to go at high speeds to be close to the action. Personally, the fast-paced editing is a bit too frantic and chaotic for my liking. But hey, that's just my opinion. All right, yeah, and some of the camera angles are fantastic. Yeah, Vicky, I think that the (laughs) frantic part works here because of the peaceful side of the boat coming in. I think the juxtaposition of the two, for me, works very, very well. Yeah. I like it. It's like nothing we've seen before, really. Another of my favorite shots is we get a road's eye view of these cars flying out of the tunnel road that they've been racing through. Again, a perspective as though we were in a car ahead of all the action, kind of looking backwards and seeing what's coming at us. This is fabulous, really, and adds once again to this nonstop point of view action that we've been experiencing. It's great. Yeah, I'd like to look in your rearview mirror and see an Aston and an Alpha <laughs> just barreling towards you. <laughs> yeah, with somebody hanging out the window firing an automatic weapon. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. thanks. No. <laughs> All right, this is Italy. We think, at least for the moment, no one's told us that yet. But it looks, actually to me, it looks like the Amalfi Coast, but it's not. It's Lake Garda. So there's a lot of traffic here because it's Italy. But as they speed past one section, the Carabinieri, the local police authorities see what's happening and they radio it in saying that an Alfa Romeo is speeding towards the quarries and they jump into their vehicle and they start pursuit and really there's cars crashing everywhere and it's amazing hey guys did you know they use seven Aston Martins nine Alfa Romeos and two Land Rovers just to create this three minute sequence (laughs) that's a lot that's a lot of cars (laughs) that's an expensive scene (laughs) Just in cars. Yeah. We'll a, talk about another expense this scene had a little bit later. Yeah. With a quick few turns, <laughs> Bond's car is racing through a dusty marble quarry. Here, How do you get there that fast? <laughs> yeah. Here, another Carabinieri picks up pursuit, and lots of rounds are being fired. The Carabinieri are firing at the car chasing Bond. Then the pursuit car turns and fires on the Carabinieri, and the Carabinieri crash into a wall bounce off of it, and plunge over the cliff. There almost always has to be a car plunging off a mountain or a cliff or whatever in a Bond movie, right? So here we got one. There you go. All right. Yeah, now, let me, I made a comment about how they get there that quick. Masa di Carrera and the quarries that Bond and his pursuers drive through in this pre-title sequence are in northern Tuscany. Yeah. And it's about a three-hour drive from Lake Garda. Yes, yeah. Not a left turn no. out of Lake Garda. No. <laughs> it's, it's a great location, and the, and the Carrara marble is famous. Yep. Michelangelo used Carrara marble for sculpting his David, which is now in the Florence Museum. Yep. Leonardo da Vinci thought the same of the marble. So it's a cool place, and it's now in a Bond movie forever. Yeah. I... It's just as unlikely that... <laughs> they went from the lake to the quarries yeah. that quickly. <laughs> it was a great location, though. <laughs> yes. The scouts did a good job. All right, back to the vehicle plunging over the cliff. I give them credit here because the vehicle did not explode into a ball of flames. <laughs> I like that. Instead, because marble quarries have many layers of narrow roads from top to bottom for equipment that they use to extract the marble, here the Carabinieri vehicle having rolled off a cliff above and Bond and the pursuit vehicle having made a few turns ahead 
down the mountain, it, this Carbonieri car crashes in front of Pons Aston. Ah, but no explosion. I like well, that. <laughs> that. That was done on purpose, Dan. I read a Motor Trend article but, from November 2008 where Gary Powell, who was the stunt coordinator for Quantum of Solace, yeah. he was quoted. And he says that the gas tank and the engine were removed before <laughs> it was sent over the cliff to purposefully avoid an explosion. Well. And they also took the airbags out. <laughs> yeah, that would have looked funny. <laughs> now, this chase, I, I made the comment earlier that there's some other stuff that happened with this chase. At the time, there was a lot of press because one of the stunt drivers in an Alpha got seriously hurt during the chase. Mm -hmm. And here's how Paul, Paul puts it. Unfortunately, <laughs> the press get there and they see these crashes. Crashes are a part of the film. <laughs> the cars are supposed to bloody crash. Every time they see a crash, they say, oh, the cars had a crash. Quick, they've had an accident. The car's supposed to crash. <laughs> that's the whole idea of the freaking car chase. <laughs> I love that quote. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And he says the report of an Alfa Romeo balancing on the cliff was also incorrect. Yeah. It hit a wall. It certainly wasn't balancing on a cliff. Right. That was part of the chase, but unfortunately, someone got hurt. Yeah. Now, he is referring to the accident with stuntman Aris Comninos in an Alfa Romeo, which was part of the car chase. Back to Powell. Okay. Unfortunately, a stunt guy got hurt. Not through anyone's fault. It was a very small mechanical failure that caused Aris to have an accident. Everyone's done what they were supposed to do. It was supposed to be a crash scene, so the devastation everyone sees in the photograph was supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, there Powell go. continues that every precaution was taken. We try to make it as safe as possible, but unfortunately, accidents happen, just like billion-dollar space shuttles blow up because of a $2 ringlet. Yeah. If the job wasn't dangerous, we wouldn't have a job. Mm, yeah. So we're watching a chase with lots of crashes in action. It's exciting. It looks deadly. But in reality, with the way stunts work, they're not as deadly as they seem. Yeah. Okay. And I'm still happy that the car didn't blow up because there have been tests of this. And I think Mythbusters did a test on this too, where they actually yeah. shot bullets through, you know, gas tanks of cars just to see if they blow up. And and they don't blow up. And most of the times they don't blow up when they roll down a hill. But anyway, <laughs> glad well, they did. Well, it's didn't. good they took precautions just in case. Yes, absolutely. All right, Bond's car throughout the chase is holding up well in terms of deflecting bullets. But remember, his driver's door is gone, and he's vulnerable on that side. So Q can't help him here. And so <laughs> as much as he made this car bulletproof in every way, because it seems to be bulletproof all around, not just the windows, because we'll find out later, right? But the space where the missing door was would not be bulletproof. Not be bulletproof unless it has an invisible shield. Yeah. <laughs> Activate the invisible shields. Well, this is uh, after after die another day. Yeah, right. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The pursuers know the door is missing and they attempt to pull up alongside Bond on the driver's side so they can get a clear shot at him. Bond is smashing into the other car side to side, trying to prevent them from advancing the Bond's Achilles heel. The driver's door that is gone. Exposing or his left rib. <laughs> yeah. Exposing Bond to the elements and bullets. Yeah. All right. Now, I love how Bond is kind of ducking the bullets flying at him. <laughs> kind of there, amazing, there's a couple it? of shots there. Now, okay, maybe naturally you would do that. You'd, oh, you'd be getting out of the way because that's your natural reaction. But it looks funny for Bond to be doing this. So, <laughs> but you'll hey, see. I, I'm, I'm going back to the Tarzan yell. <laughs> I'd be doing the same thing. Here, I'd probably be squirming <laughs> like that too. But then, <laughs> after he's ducking the bullet and grimacing and stuff, Bond calmly picks up his automatic rifle and starts firing back at the pursuers coming up alongside him but a little bit to the rear they were still. But then, seemingly, they're right at his side, and there's another camera shot of Bond firing at them. And now we have the perspective of the pursuers as Bond's weapon is aimed right at them. So we're looking down the barrel, basically, of Bond's weapon. So like now... He's aiming it at us. Yeah, now we're in the other yeah. car, and Bond is aiming his weapon at us. Again, I love these point-of-view shots, and they're throughout this chase. And so we are brought into every part of the action. So now we are the pursuers. We started off as an observer on the water in a boat. Then Bond looking at his side view mirrors reflection of the pursuers coming up on him. Now we're the pursuers. This I think has added so much richness to this pre-title sequence. I Love would it. agree with you totally on that. Yeah. All right. So Bond, Bond is a very good shot. We know that from other movies. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. All these henchmen shoot a billion bullets and don't hit yeah. anything yeah. bond 
first time, right? Yeah, he, he's a good shot. Like you said, not so much his pursuers <laughs> being a good shot. And here again, the camera brings us right into the pursuer's vehicle. And we see here, because I wondered why the car would crash off the cliff, the pursuer's car, as it will in a second, if Bond just hits the passenger who was shooting at him. No, we see the driver grimace, his driver side door window get hit with bullets, and then the car plunges off the cliff. This was terrific to show us this, almost as though we were in the car. So yeah, their car crashes off the cliff, another car off the cliff. But that's great. That's a great camera angle there. And they revealed something to us that in a second you would miss it. Absolutely. <laughs> and kudos once again, because the car did not blow up as it rolled down the hill. <laughs> Powell didn't mention this scene in the Moto Trend article. So I don't know if they, maybe they took the gas tank out of this one too. I'm not sure. Yeah. <sighs> And first-rate sound effects as the cars tumble yeah. down the rocky hill. So yeah. we have the sounds of the engine at 26 seconds in, and now we hear the car tumbling down the rocky hill, especially when it comes to a halt. There's the remaining sound of rocks and dust settling. Yeah. The car's done, but there's stuff still falling around it. We talked about this in other podcasts, that cars don't usually explode during this type of trauma. Yeah. Now, we've come a long way from the hearse from <laughs> Dr. No, <laughs> yeah. which went off a cliff, yeah. to the Carabinieri and the pursuit vehicle here in Quantum of Solace. Yeah. Yet, <laughs> cars fall off of hills in many, yeah. many James Bond movies. Yeah, they do. I think the biggest thing that Bond villains could do for themselves and their henchmen is target practice. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They can't hit anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't want to leave us with a cliffhanger. <laughs> All right, the next shot, no pun intended. Bond is pulling through the city gates of the walled town of Siena, Italy at Chiesa di San Giuseppe. Okay, I'm going to come back to this. Yeah. So it takes about three and a half hours <laughs> to drive from Limone sul Garda to Siena. Now, maybe not for Bond and an Aston Martin, but it's an Aston without a door. Yeah. You know, now, wait a second, though. The car chase starts in Lake Garda, but then it goes to the quarry. Yes. Which is about a three-hour drive between them. Yeah. And then it ends up in, I mean, you talk about movie magic. They didn't look at a map, and they don't want you to either. <laughs> no, they don't care about that kind of stuff because they could put us, they do this kind of stuff all the time. So to the marble quarries is really where he's going from Lake Garda. The marble quarries, that's like you said, about three and a half hours. He still has to get to Siena from there. And that's a pretty good ride. <laughs> All right, so he pulls into the courtyard here, and double doors and a wall swing open to allow his car through as the doors close automatically behind him, and he's driving down this long brick tunnel. And it's very authentic looking for Sienna, and it really is a tunnel, and they actually did drive through this tunnel that's still there today. So Bond stops the car after... And it had been there for quite a while before. <laughs> yeah, a long time. Sienna's a gorgeous town. Yeah. Bond stops the car after a short drive. He gets out and he opens the trunk. In it is a tied up Mr. White. <laughs> we remember Bond got the better of him right at the end of Casino Royale. Well, here he is captured and in the trunk, in the boot of this car. He has been in there this whole chase scene which is remarkable. I guess Q made the trunk bulletproof too, because man, he had to go through hell and back in that car. He looks a little rattled as Bond calmly says, it's time to get out. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this cracks me up. We talked about how it was movie magic, how they jumped from these different places. But while all of that was going on, Mr. White was in the boot for a very long time, yeah. getting jostled like crazy. All the sharp turns, the stopping and starting, the yep. spinning, all of the chase scene. He had to get beaten up badly during that chase. Yeah. So maybe it was good that he had a couple hours after the chase to relax before they got to Sienna. <laughs> yeah, relax nice in, a, in the boot no. of the car. That's yeah, fun. Absolutely, because he doesn't look like he had just gone through that much hell. He looked rattled and he looked a little mm. beat up, but not like I would have expected. Yeah. Now, but. another part of the movie magic here starts at the end of the movie Casino Royale. Because remember, he opened up the trunk and Mr. White's there. Mm -hmm. That means that oh, he left Casino Royale and they're, they're, I guess they're making you believe that that was Lake Garda. But really, Mr. White's estate was Via Galleta mm -hmm. and it's on Lake Como, not Lake Garda. Yeah. So that means now that the pre-title opens in Lake Como, 
or the start of the drive. <laughs> then they leave Lake Como, drive to Lake Garda, <laughs> then to the quarry, then to Siena. Yeah. Again, it's an interesting route, but it'd be a very beautiful one to take. Yeah. Yeah. And both lakes are gorgeous. I've been to both too. Lake Como, yep. gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful. All yeah, right. And very, they're, they're different too, which is nice. Me personally, when he opens that trunk and you kind of think, okay, <laughs> what's going to be in the trunk but you, you kind of anticipated knowing it's the next movie after casino royale and right at the end of casino royale is when he shoots mr white and he's standing over him he says bond james bond you kind of think okay he's you know probably going to be somebody in there and it's going to be mr white but i'm just amazed that the trunk opens so effortlessly after all the crashing and bullets <laughs> rid riddling this vehicle and hey boy and hey, Q does up the Aston Martin pretty damn well. It's yeah, like, so it's, not, it's not just it's not just Mr. White that somehow came out of that relatively unscathed. Yeah, <laughs> the boot of the car did too. Yeah. All right. So we know Bond was last in the Carrara Marble Quarry area, and now he's in Siena, which in reality, like we were talking about, is a two-hour drive south and a little bit east. So there you go. As an aside, I've been to Siena. Not during the polio, which we'll see in the beginning of the movie. Uh, right after the title sequence. After the title sequence. It's a beautiful town. And I had lunch on the square there. It's, nah, it's not really a square, but this is where they run the race, the polio race with the horses and everything. It's a fabulous, beautiful little walled-in town. Gorgeous. All right, the pre-title ends now as we slip right into the title sequence with Another Way to Die being sung by Jack White and Alicia Keys with Bond silhouetted against the full ball of the sun as he turns and fires to his right with what looks like sand blasting out of the barrel and tracking the speeding bullet. So, we know sand and sun are going to play a big part of this movie. And they absolutely do. Yeah. All right. Again, this is not one of my favorite title sequences or songs. No, I agree. It's my least favorite Bond song. And I was all for the gun barrel being moved to after the pre-title sequence in Casino Royale, but I think moving it to the end of the film just didn't work. I think the film in general moved too much away from the formula of Bond. I agree with you about moving away from the Bond formula, like there's no gun barrel in the yeah. pre-title area at all or the title area at all. So there's some of the Bond formula missing, but I really thought it was gripping. I love that chase. You look at the pre-title sequence, it is exciting, I have to say. You look at it as a pure car chase thing, this is, I don't know, one of the best car chases in any Bond movie. The Casino Royale one was pretty good, but this is, I think, just fabulous. So yeah, I, I I'm giving it props that. for that. A plus all around on that one. This is one of the pre-title sequences where we actually know what happened <laughs> and what's going on now. Wow, that's pretty good. All right, it's an awesome chase scene, and that is it for the pre-title sequence. That's a wrap. <laughs> this has been Dan Silvestri and Tom Pizzato of SpyMovieNavigator.com. Please subscribe to our show and our YouTube channel called Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter at Spy Navigator, and Instagram too. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend. We appreciate it.